I have some great HOA stories for you today, and you're going to love that title story too. Here's our first one. HOA Karen tows me, but I'm not even in the HOA. I thought I was going to get a nice night at the house, but our local Karen, who is in this HOA, my house is outside of it, had to make a scene. I'd heard stories about her. She took her role as the unofficial guardian of sorts of the HOA very seriously, even if it meant causing trouble for those who weren't even part of the HOA like me. As I settled down, preparing to unwind after a long day, I heard a ruckus outside. I got curious, so I peeked through the curtains, only to see ugly HOA Karen pointing at my car. I frowned, wondering what on earth she could be us just so upset about. I was parked legally on the street, and my car, it was well maintained. So I just shook my head and decided to confront the situation head on. Stepping outside, I was met with a tirade of complaints from Karen about how my car was ruining the neighborhood and that it was an eyesore. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. It wasn't the first time someone had complained about aesthetics, but this was a whole new level. Excuse me, I interjected, attempting to inject some reason into the conversation. Hey, I'm not part of this HOA. I'm free to park on the street as long as I'm not breaking any rules, which I'm not. Karen, however, was having none of it. She insisted that the street was an extension of the neighborhood, and therefore, she had jurisdiction over it. I tried to reason with her, explaining that she couldn't enforce HOA rules on non-members, but she was adamant. She informed me that a tow truck was on its way and I'd have to pick up my car and handle it with them. I panicked. I rushed back into my house, grabbing any document I could find to prove that I was indeed the rightful owner of the vehicle. As I raced back outside, I waved the paperwork frantically in front of Karen's face, hoping I could just prove her wrong and that she would finally get it. Hey, hey, look, I own this car, and I'm not part of your HOA. You have no right to tow it, I said, trying to keep my frustration in check. To her credit, Karen momentarily was taken aback. However, she quickly recovered, insisting that the appearance of my car was reason enough for her to take matters into her own hands. Desperate, I dialed a non-emergency police line to seek guidance on this perplexing situation. As I explained the absurdity of what was happening, the dispatcher assured me that they would send an officer to mediate. While the officer was on his way, the tow truck arrived and began hooking my car up. I tried to explain what was going on, but he still did his job, a job that he shouldn't even be doing. In what felt like an eternity, the officer did finally arrive, bringing a confused expression on his face. After hearing both sides of the story, he quickly confirmed what I had been saying all along that Karen had no authority to tow my car and she was overstepping her boundaries. The officer turned to Karen, reminding her that she couldn't enforce HOA rules on non-members and certainly not on public property. He instructed the tow truck driver to stand down, much to my relief. However, the story doesn't end there. The next day, I received a call from the HOA president who had been made aware of Karen's overzealous actions. He apologized profusely for her behavior and assured me that this would be addressed promptly. A few days later, I learned that Karen had been fined by the HOA for her misguided attempt to enforce rules on a non-member. Well, this was ironic. The very person who claimed to uphold order was now facing consequences for her own lack of judgment. Let's just say that HOA Karen never tried to mess with me again. I mean, it's just straight up. If you're not in the HOA, you cannot have it applied to you, and someone will use that against you if they think that you won't stand up for yourself, but when you do, you really put them in their place. What would have you done? Condo Takeover HOA Lawsuit I just bought a condo unit last year, and throughout this year, we found out now, not previously disclosed, about a ton of structural and material repairs that are needed to fix up the building. The total amount is ridiculous and has no real basis or plan. In any case, they violated our 22.1 statements by saying there is no special assessment planned for this year or the next two years as of 2022. There are reports that are now surfacing that show inspection reports by architects hired which detailed out a 2 million plus cost, and our reserves were 500k. These reports were not disclosed during the buying process, even though they clearly knew and discussed this since 2021. 
We're also now finding out that the law firm that the board and association has on the board is using a lawyer who does condo takeovers to basically force a massive $4 million association down our throats, which would more than double our current HOA. We've just taken a vote to try and overturn the assessment, but they pulled out some BS sketchy answers with no math and said that it didn't pass. There was absolutely zero transparency into how this was tallied up, and not to mention, they didn't even allow virtual attendees to vote. You had to be there in person, so good luck if you're an investor. Anyone have experience with this and what the best option might be to take action against the association or the board? I've heard litigation might not be the smartest idea because of the time and money it would take, but I'm not sure what options I have that would be effective. Most of the roads I've gone down have been a dead end, and it seems like most law firms defend the HOA, but not many represent owners for litigation, so it's been really tough to even find a lawyer who is willing to litigate this. An answer, you're going to have to go the lawsuit route, find a lawyer, but it will be challenging. What state are you in? What it feels like is that the developer is making a play for the whole building and is conspiring with the board to make it happen by keeping maintenance low and then laying a big assessment to cover necessary repairs. If they were just keeping the fees low and not doing maintenance, you might have a good case. You could sue the board personally and the HOA for going this route. I see you're making a case for overturning the assessment. Not something you could do in Florida, for that would be a board responsibility, not HOA. How is the vote organized? officially via the bylaws or grassroots effort. If you follow the process, you have a case, especially if you ask for the records of the election, you're entitled to them, to count the vote yourself. If you have a case for lack of disclosing known information, like a big assessment already voted in, you might be able to sue the previous owner, which is the seller, but not the HOA. Sounds like this is your biggest issue because of the lack of the 22.1 information. If the seller knew and didn't disclose, you have a case. If the seller didn't know, hard to have a case but probably not an issue to the HOA. If they're putting large assessments in, there's a case that they're doing the right thing by addressing the needs of the HOA. See Surfside. What would you do? Would you lawyer up in this case? Let me know. As we get into the next story, I have to tell you something. Hey, also, I added more stories to the new 24-7 HOA care and radio stream on the channel. Perfect to binge or play for background noise while you sleep. Check out the link in the description or on the front page of the channel. It looks like this. HOA manager and neighbors are using the HOA to harass me. I posted a couple of months ago about my stalker neighbors filing an HOA complaint against me saying that my exterior lights are floodlights, even though they're normal exterior lantern style 100 watt light bulb lights. My neighbors have been harassing me for the last five years. The cops went to their house a month ago and told them to leave me alone. And if they set foot on my property again, it'll be considered trespassing. The male neighbor had previously shown up drunk on my doorstep in the middle of the night and wouldn't leave. He also kissed me without my consent a few years ago. He has also made comments to me in the past that he didn't need me to be home for him to go into my backyard because he knew my keypad code to the garage door. Anyway, I got a lawyer, and my lawyer sent a letter along with video evidence showing that my lights do not cast any light onto their property measured with a luxometer. Also, sent multiple photos of others' homes in the HOA with similar exterior lights to mine. HOA manager Flat ignored my lawyer until two days before the hearing when my lawyer emailed again to say that if the hearing was still going to move forward, we want an open hearing so that members of the HOA can be present and that we can record it. HOA manager emailed back immediately that there were no meetings for the rest of the year and to check back after January 1st. Now, two weeks later, the same jerkface HOA manager sends me a new notice of violation, this time saying that my ring camera is in violation because I didn't get permission for it. The CCNRs do not say anything about security cameras. He even says that he will not permit it where it's currently installed, above my garage. Drove around the neighborhood today and there's 20 other homes with security cameras above their garage or near their garage. This manager keeps writing fake times and dates for the violation and falsely claims he is the one observing the violation, when it's actually my stalker neighbors. This HOA manager is not applying the rules fairly to everyone in my neighborhood. He's singling me out. What can I do? Terrible HOA Karen story time. So yeah, it's been storming since late last night and the pouring rain has been on and off since. 
This morning, I left to work, and the rain let up enough to where I didn't need my umbrella, which I usually leave in my car since it almost always rains when I get out of work. I live in a gated community where residential parking is scarce to say the least. Oftentimes, I, like many other tenants, can only find residential parking spots far from home. Any residents who were caught parked in a guest space were given a lovely notice with something along the lines of, park here again and we'll freaking tow you at your expense. Mind you, this is in a neighborhood where guest parking spots outnumber resident parking spots. HOAs, am I right? So on days when I come home after a closing shift between 10 and 11 p.m., I am doomed to park so far from my townhouse that it takes me a good 10 minutes to walk home, in the dark, alone sometimes in the rain. This will be relevant momentarily. After work today, I made a quick grocery run for ingredients for tonight's dinner. It's around 6 o'clock at this point, and then it starts coming down in buckets shortly on the short drive home. I parked briefly in front of the house to drop the four bags off inside so I don't have to fight with my umbrella and the integrity of the groceries. Once that was done, I began my main quest for parking. Luck was sadly not on my side, but I figured I'd look for a vacant spot tomorrow morning when it wasn't a downpour. Now, I have one of those inverted umbrellas with a starry galaxy pattern that makes getting in and out of the car during the rain just so very nice, let me tell ya. They run around $19, but it's worth it. So I make my way home on foot, clinging to my umbrella as the straight down rain became the dreaded diagonal pour. I heard someone say, hey. And I looked to see a large woman, probably in her 60s I think, in a tight pink tank and a tighter red shorts that I almost mistook for denim panties smoking in her garage. I don't really know anyone in my neighborhood, so I wasn't sure what to think. Let's call her Entitled Lady Karen. Karen says, Can I have your umbrella? My overworked, underpaid, soak-shoed self just wanted to go home, make dinner, and do jack crap for the rest of the night. Who the heck asked to have someone's umbrella? Especially when the raindrops coming down are the size of grapes. I looked at her, hoping that I misheard what I clearly heard. I asked, pardon? Karen says, your umbrella's cute. Can I have it? I told her, uh, no. Well, why not? Come on, I need to check my mail. Logic.exe has stopped responding. FYI, the mailboxes were by the main gate, a three-minute walk from my house, which was still several houses away. I said, because it's raining a lot and I'd rather not get soaked. Karen said, ah, you'll live, a little rain won't hurt you. Says the woman standing in her dry garage, safe. To which I reply, then you'll be fine getting your mail. I tried so hard not to laugh at her version of the surprise Pikachu face that everyone keeps memeing about, and so happy I finally got to see it in action. She scoffed and threw excuses like her hair, her makeup, whatever getting ruined. This coming from a woman who looks like she just got out of bed with no makeup, while I, a woman wearing modest makeup and have my raincoat hood protecting my humidity curled hair, am astonished to meet a wild Karen outside of my place of work. What a time to be alive. When she was done squawking or talking, I don't know, her voice was audible sandpaper, I decided that I was no longer amused and I went home. After a few seconds, I looked back and she was standing on the sidewalk with her now soaked cigarette. I was disappointed that she didn't start melting, yelling, oh, what a world. My vindictive butt shouted back at her, guess you can get your mail now. Don't worry, she didn't see where I lived, and I went on to have a nice big bowl of homemade soup for dinner. How would have you stood up to this HOA Karen, and what about those horrible parking spots? What would have you done? This psycho Karen thinks she owns the HOA. Let's see what OP thinks about that. Back in 2013, I, now 35 female, lived with my parents in part to help my mom take care of my dad as his health was deteriorating. Ultimately, it turned out to be cancer, caused by exposure to a chemical during his military service in the U.S. Marine Corps back in the late 1960s and early 1970s that turned out to be terminal. Due to the fact that mom and I were so focused on dad's care in the time that we weren't working and dad's own inability to take care of some things, some of the more cosmetic parts of home maintenance fell by the wayside. Minor things like fixing the walkway from the driveway to the front door, not a sidewalk by the street, mind you, 
and chipped paint on the front of the house suddenly weren't as important as trying to coax dad into taking his medications, trying to get him to eat something in the hopes that it would be kept down, or making sure that he made it to his appointments on time. A month or two after dad passed away, while mom and I were still grieving, a wild Karen appears at our doorstep claiming to be the president of the HOA that did not exist in our neighborhood. Dad checked for that before he ever made the offer on the house. Mom was out at the time, and so I was the one who answered the door. Karen says, Hello, I'm Karen, and I live down the street. I'm secretary of the Neighborhood Homeowners Association. We demand to know why your house has reached the terrible state that it's in. Uh, no, no you aren't. I know for a fact that your homeowners association doesn't exist. My late father checked into that when he bought the house, and a lawyer looked into it just after he passed. So stop lying. Well, I am still entitled to know why your house is in this state. Not my house. It was my father's house, now it's in my mother's name, and that of my older brother. And you aren't entitled to anything. But if your sanctimonious butt wants to know and harass the grieving widow of a veteran and her spinster daughter, fine. You're about my parents' age, so my father lost his life to a battle with cancer caused by his service in a war so people like you could spit on him upon his return. Instead of claiming to be from a homeowner's association that doesn't exist, be honest and say that you're demanding an explanation that you have no right to. We're not in city limits either, so you can't try to whine about the city ordinances. Well, it's still lowering the property values. Then why are you demanding an explanation for yourself rather than offering to help? I know most of the neighborhood knows. They brought food. I don't have time for this. You're trespassing and you have 10 seconds to start leaving the property before I call the county sheriffs. And if you come back, they will be called unless you are escorted by a Girl Scout with a cookie order form. Get bent. Do you think OP had some guts to stand up for their family in this hard time? Let me know what you think. How would you handle terrible HOA neighbors? Ever since I've moved in, I've been going back and forth with my neighbor, a single mom with two adult grown children where they have all tried to either park in my parking spot or block my driveway. And I tried texting her to fix the issue many times. Finally, I had it reported to the HOA president and they sent an email to all of us in the community with reminders on many things, including only to park in your own parking spot or designated areas. Me and my neighbor are the only people with parking spots. Everyone else just has their garage and driveway and their guests park on the street. So she knows I complained about her and that message was directly to her. Since that email went out, I had one incident with the mother of my neighbor visiting and I went out to tell her not to park in my spot as I had guests coming. She was only parking there until her daughter pulls out of her driveway and she'll move her car into her daughter's driveway. Other than that, they haven't blocked me since, which I'm really glad about. The HOA president said that he will reiterate this at our next HOA meeting. The HOA meeting is next week. I feel like I should say something with the audience of all my neighbors, but I'm not sure what. Right now, the two grown adult children are avoiding me like the plague. I don't care that I made the right decision as I gave them so many chances to just park on the street, which has plenty of street parking. They don't want to have to walk the one minute it takes to park on the street and walk into their home. Would you say anything at the HOA meeting? Do you agree with this? If they block your driveway, tow them. They'll learn real fast not to do it. If the reminder from the HOA solved the problem, let it go. Bringing it up at the meeting will just make you sound like you're complaining for no reason. If you say anything, I would just thank the board for solving your recent issue. And if you and your neighbor are the only ones with parking spots, nobody's going to care about your parking issue with your neighbor, and they'll likely think you're a butt for wasting everyone's time with an issue that only affects you and seems to be largely resolved. You're right, it's fixed, I'll let it go. I agree that just thanking the board will go a long way. Do you think that the issue's fixed, or what would you do? HOA story time. Entitled neighbor wants workers to unseal the road so he could get out. This is about my entitled neighbor, one of many stories. Let's call him Dan. No one in the community likes Dan. Dan unfortunately lives right across from me. A month ago, we get a message from the HOA that they will be doing an asphalt seal coat on the roads in our community. They split it into three sections one day for each section. They said it will take about 11 and a half hours, so from 7.30 in the morning to 7 at night, so we needed to plan accordingly for the day that the work will be done. 
For people who need to use their cars during the road work, they needed to move their cars to a nearby street, which is less than a one minute walk. They sent several emails, mailed everyone a letter, and posted notices on everyone's door, garage door, and the common areas. Pretty impossible to notice, unless you're Dan. At about 7.45 a.m., the workers start taping off areas to get ready. 8 a.m., the tar light -like goo starts going down. These guys work fast. One machine lays down the thick liquid, and the three guys come in and spread it evenly. It's quite ASMR friendly, as it's like watching someone color. Anyways, it takes the workers about one hour to get to my part of the road. At about 9 a.m., I hear yelling outside. I look out the window, and Dan is yelling at the workers from his garage. Dan is trying to get out, and he's ticked that he can't now, unless he wants that tar like goo to get on his precious truck. He starts ordering the workers to scrape off the coat so that he can leave. I have no clue if that's possible, but they'd already passed Dan's house, plus about 20 yards past his house. The foreman comes over to talk to Dan. The foreman tells Dan he's not going anywhere and that he was notified several times. In fact, the foreman points to the notice taped next to his garage door that Dan is standing six feet from. A notice that's been there four to five days. Dan makes excuse after excuse. He says that the HOA should have knocked on his door to let him know. More shouting occurs and Dan starts threatening to sue. The foreman doesn't care, he's doing his job. He warns Dan that if he drives on the coat, he'll be responsible for his own damages and more. Dan throws another tantrum and eventually retreats back to his home. As far as I can tell, Dan is the poster child for Mel Karens. What would you do if you lived next to a neighbor like this? Let me know. HOA tows me off my property, but I'm not even in the HOA. Click the video on your screen so you see what happens to that nasty HOA and I'll see you there.